Hey folks, um, thank you very much for joining. Well done for um, making it through the day so far. Um, congratulations to everyone who came to the best review panel just now, which is obviously the technical one. Um, we had a great chat. We talked um, quite a bit about schema, which is um, going to be um, a recurring theme throughout the rest of the day. Um, I think you just mentioned it earlier in the day as well. Um, for those of you who sat patiently throughout all of these sessions saying, what is schema? How do I do this? What are you talking about? Um, hopefully this will help. I have 20 minutes to talk to you about um, my experience with 10 years of structured data and specifically schema.org markup. We're going to go reasonably fast, but you can all catch up um, hopefully on some recordings later, but um, hopefully we shouldn't lose too many people along the way. So I want to take you back in time to 2011. Um, this is a photo I found of me um, from a conference I gave um, back in 2011. That's nearly 10 years ago, close enough. Um, at the time, I was the SEO manager in a digital marketing agency. Um, I recently found the video footage and slides for the event and watched it back, which is why I bring this up, because unlike many things from SEO 10 years ago, it was still surprisingly relevant. You see, I talked about the importance of structured data and of schema.org. At the time, the schema.org website had just launched. It was a collaboration between Google, Bing, Yahoo, and Yandex, um, some of whom are still around. Um, it defined methods and code, essentially a language which developers could use to structure and describe their content in more detail. So rather than just having a web page with my products on it and pictures and text or my services or my recipes or whatever else, I could use structured data to describe the specific attributes of those things in a way that search engines could understand my prices, my ingredients, my opening hours, the images, the authors, and the relationship between all these things. In my talk all those years ago, I explained how if we implemented those new technologies on our websites, um, we could help search engines to better understand our content. That would lead to easy wins like richer search engine listings, better rankings, and all sorts of competitive advantages. More excitingly, perhaps, it would open up new possibilities for the future of the web and all sorts of exciting things. However, as the years went by, not many people took full advantage of schema.org. It was complex, it was difficult to understand, the code was difficult to write, difficult to manage, and it frequently broke as you updated your content or your website's themes. It needed a load of extra work and input from developers at all sorts of stages, and content writers went back and forth with techies, and the whole thing never quite gelled. In a nutshell, it was hard. Even though there were some rewards from the search engines for implementing it, better rankings, better ratings in the search results, etc. they often weren't worth the trouble, the time, or the cost to achieve that. Good news. Today, though about 10 years later, schema.org has matured a lot, and Google are pushing really, really hard for adoption. Now, a lot of what's driven that is that the coding standards and approaches for writing schema.org markup have evolved. It's much easier to write and maintain structured data and code than it used to be. And the rewards are much better, much more explicit, and much more significant. The image in the slide shows an example where we're describing a product using structured data and schema.org markup. It has attributes like a cost and reviews and a brand. And you can see on the right how Google can take that information and understand it and use it to display rich results and star ratings and understand that an image has a price and these sorts of things. The reason Google really wants us to adopt schema.org markup so, so heavily is because it allows them to transform their search result pages from lists of links that a user has to choose from into something like this. The examples in the background are from an SEO tool called Systrix, who recently categorized over 40 different type of search results, which they'd seen across their data sets. There are cards, tools, widgets, answers, interactive things. Now to get these and provide these kind of results, Google needs to do more than just crawl the web and extract the content that they find. They need to understand what they're consuming. They get that understanding from schema.org markup. Just to zoom out a moment, fancier search results aren't Google's end game. They're a stepping stone in a much bigger strategy of becoming the Star Trek computer, where Google Assistant, whether it's running on our phones or our TVs or in a search box on a browser like we used to, just solve our problems. We don't have nearly enough time to explore the implications of that today, but suffice to say for now, to become that perfect personal assistant, Google needs structured data. Let's take a step back. That's a lot of technical complex stuff. 
things which most people who run a site or write content or sell products online or sell horses online, if you were in the tech panel just now, probably aren't deeply familiar with. And that's a problem. We don't think you should have to be an expert in all of these in order to take advantage of the rewards and to describe your content in a way Google wants. If you're an excellent baker, you should be focusing on baking and on blogging about your baking recipes and taking excellent photographs and your, um, improving your quality of writing and so on. You shouldn't have to be worrying about your site's code and the intricate nuances of schema.org and structured data. I personally, I think it's a bit of a mistake in Google strategies that they're encouraging and relying on individual webmasters to manage and maintain this sort of stuff. That feels like a distraction from the things they should be focusing on, which isn't necessarily good for users. Furthermore, there are a ton of schema plugins which let you add structured data to your pages for WordPress and beyond. This is a screenshot of a result on WordPress.org for schema. But you have to manage these in addition to writing and managing your content, which means if you want to take advantage of all this schema stuff, you have to maintain two versions of your page. You have to write all your content and then you have to write and choose all of your schema. And if those go out of sync, you risk being penalized by Google for misrepresenting your content. Let's say you have a lower overall review score than you remember to mark up in your schema and Google slaps you on the wrist. And furthermore, these plugins often don't integrate very well into your themes or your content or each other. There's a lot of manual work. These things produce bits of structured data. It's not universally good enough to support what Google needs. Our own plugin included until relatively recently, we didn't solve this for you as well as we'd wanted to. Now, all that is changing because this bothered us greatly. This kept us awake at night. This kept me awake over Christmas dreaming about schema back in 2018, I think. You see, delivering and capitalizing on the next generation of these rich experiences, a better web for Google, for users, for businesses, requires better, more complex, and more connected structured data than really any of us collectively have been able to achieve so far. Because content management systems, users, and plugins, and developers can't gel well enough to achieve this kind of level of detailed description. Maybe with enough budget or training or size or development resources, you could build and maintain something bespoke for your own site. But that pushes small independent publishers, the bakers, the butchers, the writers out of the search results, which isn't a good thing. So rewinding to November 2018, we set ourselves a challenge. We said, how can we enable everybody to have rich structured data which represents their content, their business, their opening hours, their recipes, their products, their prices, etc. How can we do all of that automatically, invisibly and perfectly based just on the user's content without having to make them go through admin and maintenance processes? And perhaps more importantly, how can we make that approach scalable and interoperable beyond Yoast? So not just a, a shiny, shiny thing that we do that you have to have Yoast to achieve and beyond WordPress to be platform and technology agnostic. How do we solve schema for everyone, regardless of their technology? So a slight shortcut to somewhere around April 2011, but I'm really proud to say that I think we've achieved those goals and we've paved the way for some really exciting new capabilities. If we had hours and hours to talk, I could tell you about all the challenges and the problems we encountered to, to achieve this and everything we went through. But as of way April 2019, it's a while ago now, as of then, we got to the point where we are delivering rich structured data, which represents people's content to them automatically at scale, invisibly, without requiring them to go through additional admin processes. And the standards and approach we've defined and developed are, con are context agnostic. Whether you're running on Drupal or Magento or building your own solutions, you can take the approach we've defined and the way we've thought about schema and implement the same logic on your site. What we're producing looks like this. On the right, you can see a screenshot of a blog post written by our very own Edwin about schema. This gets a bit circular. In the background, you can see the code that we're outputting. If you view the HTML source of any of our blog posts, you can see this type of code and it is incredibly dense. When you start to skim through Google's testing tools to see what it's doing in a bit more um, clarity, you can see how we describe 
the date that an article was published, the name of the author who wrote it, the publisher that they work through, the Twitter profile of that publisher, the logo, the height of the logo, where those files live, the relationships between them. We're describing this graph of interconnected data in great detail. And that, that allows Google to take it, to understand it, and to use it to give us rich search results, to put things in the search results like star ratings and reviews and people's names and faces. But more importantly, it helps them to start to understand the web, that Yoast is the same company that offers Yoast SEO the product, which is the same company that publishes blog posts about structured data, which are written by Edwin. All of these things are connected and allowing Google to understand those allows them to index it better, to rank it better, to connect it to other entities on the web. The secret source for at least part of our solution was Gutenberg. Now I mentioned this on the tech panel, I know many people are, have mixed feelings about Gutenberg. Still, this is very much the future of web editing and content on the web. If you want to take advantage of more sophisticated structured data, and in particular, if you want to compete with other sites who are doing so, you will need to use the best tools in the arsenal to do that. So we're in a great position now where we've already launched two Gutenberg blocks. I can definitely tell you there are more coming, maybe not the details yet, but now content authors and publishers can use our how-to blocks and our FAQ blocks to construct how-to guides seamlessly. There is no schema input field. There is no where, where you need to pick the type of schema or write the code. You just write your how-to guide. And in the background, we automatically and invisibly convert that to schema, which stitches into that big complex graph. We solved that problem of not requiring you to have to think about it. We just do it for you, which is pretty awesome. Um, what's I think perhaps more exciting for the long term is that our approach to all of this is documented. If you go to developer.yoast.com and wade through the sidebar, you can see information not just on the technical approach and the code, but also the philosophy and the thinking that went into our approach and the decisions we've made specifically to make sure that other platforms and other providers and plugins and themes and vendors can build on and adapt the work we've already done. All of the nuance around how each individual bit of schema behaves, the business logic or content logic, which determines how and when and where it should be populated, is documented. All of the awkward edge cases like saying, should the author of a web page be attached to the web page node or an article node? And what happens if they don't have an image or if it's Tuesday or if the site's back to front? All of these things we've considered and documented. We've created an open source standard for implementing schema in the real world. We also have a full API to change that output conditionally. So if you have a site that has recipes, for example, you can very easily use the examples in our code to say, take my how-to guide and turn it into a recipe. You can start to customize and evolve that logic pretty easily. The TLDR of this is that we solve all of this for you. The millions and millions of sites who are running Yoast SEO for WordPress get a rich, complete description of every page on their site, which helps Google to understand who you are what you do and what makes you special. And to enable that, you only have to go into your admin and choose whether your site represents a person or an organization. And then you just publish your content. In the technical site audits earlier, we had a question from a site saying, how do we get more out of schema? And it turned out that they were running the latest version of Yoast SEO. They were writing great content. What they hadn't done is gone to this page in their settings and just filled out these three pieces of information. Are you a business or an, or, sorry, are you a person or an organization? What is the name of your organization or person? And what image should we use? And when we have that information, we can then go and do all the schema stuff because we understand the relationship between your posts and your company and your opening hours and all these other factors. That's pretty cool. I should also mention that that's just very much the start of all of this. Our ambition for the long term is to grow this enormously. The thing we've solved so far is the foundation. What comes next is A, um, our add-on products like Yoast Local and WooCommerce extend that massively. WooCommerce adds a ton of stuff around product information and offers and the relationship between your special offer prices and your product variants and a hundred other things. Local lets you stitch and your opening hours to your type of business. I won't bore you with the details, but these go into much greater depth. But that's really just the start of it. What's next? is um, integrating with other vendors, building more block types for Gutenberg, um, some back and forth with Google as we collaborate on new approaches for some of their features, but also expansion beyond WordPress into Typo3, into other platforms that we work with and support. And the thing I'm really excited about is um, starting to get some feedback from you guys. 
from our users, from the people who run real websites with real businesses or challenges or blogs to say, how do I better help Google understand who I am and what I'm about? Rather than just having a blog post or a page about a product, how do we start to move towards a world where we say, actually, I have a blog post written by an author who has this experience or who went to this university or this page contains medical information and it was reviewed by this expert. These are the kinds of things which we can solve with schema and we want to do all of it, but it would be great to get some thoughts from you guys on where we should start. Because at the moment we have a made a, a top secret, don't, don't look at this, we have a top, top secret roadmap of a thousand things we want to do with schema. We already have the most sophisticated platform and implementation in the world, I think, for schema. But there's so much more we want to do and deliver to you that you don't have to think about. You don't have to worry about, you just have to publish. Yes mentioned this earlier, I think, briefly in his opening speech, that one of the things that this might enable, that it's worth dwelling on for a minute, is a world beyond Google. Now, a big chunk of the motivation that leads users and led us to implement structured data and schema.org markup is that Google rewards that kind of data. If you describe your product well, you get a nice shiny product feature. But, and, and I should caveat, we're really good friends with Google, we work really closely with them, we like what they're doing in a lot of cases. However, a lot of what Google's built on is the ability to crawl and scrape and process and extract information from the web. That makes it very hard for other search engines or other businesses or other software to play in that space. With schema.org markup running on the many, many millions of sites running on Yoast and everything else, now it becomes very easy for other companies to say, you know what, we want to create a mobile phone app that tells me the opening hours of every Japanese restaurant in America on a Tuesday evening. And producing that is trivial because all of the data is easily accessible and scrapable. That sort of thing is really exciting. It powers new apps, new search engines, Internet of Things concepts, machine learning capabilities. We're paving the way for a more interactive, more connected Internet. I think it also means that as SEOs, and this is really where this starts, we need to start thinking beyond pages. Ever since the beginning of SEO, the way we've been taught to think is that a page is about a topic and a keyword. And Google really likes that. It's the way they think and model their world and their thinking. But now we have smaller bits of things. We have pages that contain people and their information and their relationship with their parents and their logo and their avatar and all these other related properties. A page can contain a how-to guide and a recipe and some FAQs and an author. These are all things that are just bits and pieces. We need to start thinking from an SEO perspective. How do I optimize all of these things? Have I filled out all of my author bios and user bios? Have I described my organization? Have I defined my return policies for my e-commerce stuff? There's a huge amount of potential here to start to, um, to do some much cooler stuff with our websites than just be limited to pages. That is everything for me. Hopefully that's a, a useful primer into what we've done and where we're going and why we're excited about it and why we're talking so ever so much about it. Like we're working on this day in, day out. We're adding more stuff. We're writing blog posts. I think one last thing to focus on. Yost talked very early, um, early on today about how in many cases we don't do the best job about describing our choices and our features. There are bits of our XML sitemap functionality, so bits of XML sitemap functionality that we don't have or don't support. That's because we know that they're not supported. We've made choices in how we've built that. The same is happening here with Schema. We are doing some incredibly sophisticated stuff under the hood to, pay, under the hood to um, pave the way for what comes next. And we don't really talk about that enough. So consider this the beginning of us exposing that much more um, actively and trying to involve you lot in what we're doing and get some feedback on where you'd like us to go with it next. But TLDR, don't worry about needing to represent your brand authority and do clever complex stuff with Schema. Just publish good content and have a great site and a great brand and we will do the rest. Thanks, Jano. You you filled the entire Q and A uh, time already, but still. Oh no! Sorry, my timer was wrong. Disaster. Oh, that's all right. We'll we'll take a, a few questions in. Uh, we don't really have a lot of questions in here anyway. Uh, oh, that, the first question that was asked is, um, how can I add the local business in schema, uh, business schema in Yoast? Oh, uh, super easy. Just get the local add-on. Um, it's available in the store. There's a sale on at the moment. Go into that, turn it on, and tell us what type of local business you are. There's lots of types. You might be a vet, you might be a bakery, you might be a school. Uh, define that, and we go and output it all. Same principle right. applies. We do the work. So it's really, really a breeze to do that with your uh, a local SEO add-on. Yeah. Um, someone is asking, uh, 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 
will there be a review block? Oh, interesting review block. Um, there so there may review. or there may not be. <laughs> <laughs> so we can't comment on um, roadmap features for a whole bunch of reasons. I can tell you that if you're running WooCommerce and our WooCommerce add-on, we already stitch product reviews into the graph. We say, here's a product with some offers and some reviews. A block's an interesting idea. You know what? I don't even know if we've thought about that. I don't know when a review would be interesting independent of a product or a service, but we, we should think about that. I will, I will go and have a look and not tell you what the answer is. All right, so let's do one last question. Um, when do you expect full e-commerce checkouts from A to Z in Google's SERP? Oh, that's interesting. Um, I think very soon. So at what point will Google just bring the whole e-commerce um, process into the SERP? So this is, if, if you, <laughs> if I, I presented the, the good Jedi white version of this story. There is a, a dark Sith story version where Google just extract everybody's content and then use it for their own means. There are places where this is happening and it has a real impact on the real world where um, people, uh, Google serve websites, content and solutions in the search engine and those businesses don't have a way to make money. That's scary. I definitely think it's feasible that Google will do more things like Google Flights where you can complete the whole process in the search results. There's some political implications, there's some technical ones, I don't know. It feels like that may be good for users, but nobody's really solved the question of how do you support the businesses underneath that. And it's definitely not enough to just have schema for that. You will also need some sort of protocols in place to make that kind of uh, transactions possible via the open web. Um, yeah. We really have to wrap up now, uh, two minutes ago actually, but we'll do it now. So instead of a 10 minute break, we'll have a uh, eight minute break. And at 10 past six, we'll have a pop quiz.